On January 3rd, Lifetime debuted the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, illuminating some sobering news about the artist who has long been accused of sexually abusing young women. Why didn't anyone know this? We all know this. No one cared because we were black girls. I'm sorry. It's okay. One revelation was that R. Kelly wrote Michael Jackson's 1995 hit, You Are Not Alone, about a teen he was abusing. This time I'm a senior in high school and I found out that I was pregnant. And a few days later, I had a miscarriage. When he wrote it, he was thinking of me. You Are Not Alone topped the Billboard Hot 100 in September 1995. And according to R. Kelly, he wrote it for the king of pop himself, saying, quote, Michael contacted my management. At first I thought he was playing, but it was serious. I was very honored, and I went into the studio and wrote a song right away, custom made, for him. By 1994, R. Kelly, then 27, had already wed and separated from singer Aaliyah, who was 15. They met through the production of her debut album, AJ Nothing But A Number, and he'd written her breakout single of the same name about a young girl talking an older man into sleeping with her. In another terrible revelation from the documentary, a background singer named Javante Cunningham said she walked in on Kelly and Aaliyah having sex. Aaliyah's family issued a statement saying the story isn't true. While R. Kelly has made music that's sexually over the top, he's also made gospel-influenced hits that may have muddied the waters for some about whether they should walk away from him. Songs like I Believe I Can Fly from 1996's kid-friendly Space Jam. I believe I can fly I believe I can touch the sky And Celine Dion's Angel in 1998. I'll be your cloud of Even the remix to Ignition dropped in the shadow of allegations that he'd sexually abused a 14-year-old girl and filmed the encounter in 2000. The DVD was literally sold on city streets like a bootleg movie. In 2003, Ignition peaked at number two on Billboard's Hot 100. Numerous women have accused R. Kelly of abuse. In 2000, Jim DeRogatis first wrote about Kelly's child pornography tape leading to a criminal trial in 2008. Despite 14 witnesses and the victim's aunt, singer Sparkle, identifying the girl in the video, Kelly was acquitted. And then he said this. Do you like teenage girls? When you say teenage, how are we talking? In 2017, Dee Regattis also broke a story about a young woman who is reportedly being held against her will in a sex cult led by Kelly. The following year, R. Kelly released a 19-minute long song called I Admit, where he addressed those allegations directly. What's the definition of a cult? What's the definition of a sex slave? Go to the dictionary, look it up, let me know I'll be here waiting. Along with long-time accusations of sexual assault and pedophilia. I admit I fuck with all the ladies, ladies. that's both older and young ladies. But tell me how they call it pedophile because of that shit, that's crazy. Singer Kay Michelle, who was also in a relationship with R. Kelly for a time, had this to say. At the same time, I was the girl who was saying something happened to me and the world told me that it didn't happen. When I'm looking on the blogs and I see these girls telling their stories, it breaks my heart because I was once that girl, like, somebody know the truth, nobody gonna take up for me. R. Kelly reportedly announced plans to sue Lifetime if the documentary aired. He has denied all allegations. But based on these recent revelations, there's probably much more damning evidence on the way. I'm Hillary with Genius News, bringing you the meaning and the knowledge behind the music. You are not alone.